All right, today we're going to be going over mid-game adjustments in Search and Destroy, especially ones that are based off of uh, opponent tendencies that you might find within the game. So here we're going to be starting with the subliners round number three. This is going to be the basis round that we're going to find the info from, and then I'm going to show you the later round where they actually adjust to uh, what they see here in, in round three. So this is Major 5, New York versus Minnesota Mercado. And right off the bat, we're starting with a spread offense. So what that means is, you know, they're not directly hitting A, they're not directly hitting B, they're just all spread around the map just to see what they can do, find some info. Uh, specifically on this map, you're basically gonna be doing a spread just to play some mind games with your opponents because, you know, most of the time on Mercado, people will just bash A uh, because it was so offensively favored. Um, this kind of gives you a little bit more options and it really puts the defense on their back foot because they don't know what you are going to do and uh, you can just make a play off of it. So here with Minnesota on their defense, they're gonna have two A, uh, number eight attached. He actually threw his nades over towards uh, the back alley as well, but he's gonna wrap back towards uh, number five and help him towards B because actually in the round uh, number one, uh, New York did end up going B and they lost the round. So it's still a possibility that they can still go B. So you know, they're just gonna spread their resources there. Uh, so from this, number four, Priesta, he's gonna be uh, basically like the, the bait towards B. He throws his tax over, and number two actually throws his tax over A. So they kind of bait towards both. They're really playing some mind games with, uh, uh, with Minnesota right here. So let's go into this round. And as you can see here, they're just waiting him out. You know, number one's playing a credit, number three's playing a credit. He's gonna be looking for anyone that might be B, trying to rotate through this mid cut to try and help out towards A. Number four is actually gonna be holding this push through, uh, but he ends up giving it up because they decide that they're going to take A with a 2 2 split, two guys going through mid, two guys going through back alley. And as you can see here, number one and number three, they're just playing their positioning, they're holding off until they can you know, get their reinforcements and actually make the push together with these last two guys. So they're just holding, making sure no one pushes through on either of those lanes, and then they're gonna work this together. So as you can see here, we're gonna play out the round. So number four brings the bomb back, and as you can see here, number five and number eight, they don't see anything going. They're, they're suspecting it's just gonna be an A push. So what you see here is what you know a lot of teams would do once they realize no one was coming B. They'll, if they had two people, they'll send one guy to wrap around back through here. Actually pretty dangerous because you, you can have someone watching mid and, and watching uh, this wrap back. So uh, he's probably gonna get seen out right here. And number five, the B player, you know, a lot of times when you'd have an anchor B side, uh, you'd have them play push through um, and try and make a quick flank onto anyone. Uh, that might be still you know p4 or back alley and make a play because you're expecting them uh, towards the a side so that's what Bance does here number five he is going to make the play here and push through and uh, as you can see number eight gets caught out he knows that uh, there are people mid but you know number three gets a timing here they're just going to trade super effectively on this a site and number five is able to get this kill on number two skies. So this is a huge kill just because this is gonna be the basis for what we're gonna be seeing later on and why this kill is, is so important. So uh, he actually ends up getting traded out because uh, they probably hear him or, or something, but they, he gets traded out in the tunnels, but New York ends up winning this round despite this death because they're going to play these, you know, single out trades on the site so well. As you can see here, he gets traded out. Number seven dies to number one. It's a 3v1. Uh, pretty hard task for the Minnesota Rocker. Uh, so they end up getting this round win. Plus, we're going to be seeing a little adjustment that they make on later on. All right, so round seven. This is basically the same type of spread that we saw in that previous round. Uh, on the Minnesota Rocker side, it's basically the same thing as well. Uh, however, number six is the one floating here instead of number eight. And number five, again, anchoring the B site. But once again, a spread by New York where they're just trying to play some mind games with Minnesota. You know, they're not hitting A, they're not hitting B outright. They're just playing for info and making Minnesota guess and try and make a mistake. They're gonna try and punish any sort of regression uh, that they the Minnesota might take uh, in trying to make a flank or trying to make a quick play, whether it's through A, you know, number three is gonna be playing a credit here, or whether it's through B. 
Um, so as you can see here, we're going to play the round out and I want to make sure that you guys really recognize what's going on here uh, in terms of Nurex mindset. So they knew that Bans had hit this timing earlier in the game. They, he got that kill on Sky. So they're still going to be watching. They're, they know that there's a tendency now that there's a possibility that Bans could push through. So what they're going to do is literally just wait him out. Just make him make the mistake. You know, this is a pretty aggressive play out of Bans, but he, he's going to be making this play because he got a kill the first time. And that's kind of the, the mind game where, where we're at now, where, you know, it worked the first time. So, you know, let's try it again. It, it worked. So they're going to be playing off of this. They know it worked. And, you know, Priesta number four, he was the one holding the bricks pinch the last time. He's going to hold it on for just a little bit more here. And he's going to get a free kill on Bans, not suspecting someone to still be there because he didn't die the, die the first time. It's an easy 4v3 now. And from here, it's basically the same setup that they traded with where well, they're going to wrap back towards the A site. You know, they have this floater here again. And this way, you know, number two and number one can actually teamwork him uh, if they can. You know, obviously they have to somewhat clear the site already. But if someone's in green and no one's over here, you know, this is a free path for Paco to, to try and get some type of kill on the mid map player. So let's see what goes on here. They wrap the bomb towards there. Paco gets a timing. You know, the other guy was inside green. Number eight, we actually didn't even mention this. They get the kill B side. So number eight is, you know, thinking I get to help towards B because this is an opening now. You know, Nura can seriously just collapse onto B here and it's it's a free bomb site for them. So, you know, we're just acting on what needs to be covered and attach is going to make this play where he goes around and tries to help out B little as he know, you know, New York creates that opening, but they're just going to abuse that and go rack back towards a and use all of these personnel that they have towards here to make openings. You know, as we said before, Hydra gets this timing. He, he trades this kill on uh, skies and gets the kill on Cami. They have a three V one on the one guy in green. Last guy live attached at B, they're planning A, uh, the round's one. So this is just a, a really quick example on what mid game adjustments can do and just finding those little tendencies that players might have. And if you can abuse it, you know, that's just a round win in your favor and everything at this point in the game, you know, in this setting where you're playing against pros, any little inch matters. So uh, really good plays out of New York here.